Hi, we're going to take another look at character animator puppets in Captivate. I'm on a slide here and what I'd like to do is bring a puppet into this slide and have it appear on walking on the slide. So I want it to have the same background as my slide. So what I've done, I know this is a white slide, so I've cheated a little bit here. I've actually saved out a JPEG file the same size as my slide as just a plain white background because I'm going to use that back in Character Animator. In Character Animator, let me bring it up here, I'm going to import a puppet that I got from OKSamurai.com okay and he's Dave Werner from Adobe. He's the product manager or product manager for Character Animator and he has a whole ton of puppets and one of those is called Eliza and I've downloaded that and I have loaded that into my project and what Eliza has she has three different walk poses one's just pause one's the walk to the left one's walk to the right now this was created by Dave and that's beyond the scope of this it's beyond the scope of me I'm just going to take Eliza. I'm going to come down to the lower left corner where there's a little movie clapboard. And it says make a scene with this puppet. So I'm going to click on there. It's going to add her to this scene. I'm going to click in my timeline below here so nothing is selected so I can see the size of my scene. My scene here, width and height, is the same as my slide in Captivate. That's really important. Next thing is I'm going to pick Eliza view down here in the tracks in the timeline and I'm going to scale her down to fit on the slide. I'll bring her down like, oh let's say about this big. Once you get this size right, write that number down because you'll want to use it again to scale her to the same size in case you want to do this again. The next thing I'm going to show you is in the lower right corner of this scene window is a little black background button and this allows me to change the backgrounds of how I can see it in Character Animator. Notice something here I didn't read many times before, but here it is. Background color. Change the color behind the panel contents. The color is ignored during export. And I thought it would export out like white or black. So what I'm going to do here if you don't put a background in down the timeline here it will give you just a black background but I want a white background remember that JPEG file I made earlier I told you about it's 1027 1024 by 627 I'm gonna bring it down here in the timeline and now that's a physical file behind her just to prove it to you let me show you another file and if I turn off the visibility on the previous one, you can see it really is a different background. It's just white. I'm going to delete that street background. And now I'm going to record. But what I'd like to do is this particular puppet has a walk feature I mentioned. So I'm going to pick Eliza in the timeline. And I know that I can take my left cursor arrow and have her walk this way and let up and walk to the right, left or right. Also I know that this puppet has the ability for me to drag and move her limbs around and then let up. So I can position these while I am recording or even after I'll show you that too. So here's what I want. Ideally, I want her to walk onto the slide and then point out these three points we have over here. So what I'm going to do with Eliza selected, I'm going to come over here in the Transform Properties area and I'm going to position her off the slide on the right. So I'm going to hold over the zero, I'm going to hold my Shift key, and I'm going to slide her over here. Okay, I'm ready with my left cursor arrow. Hi, welcome to today's training on setting up your home office. Here's the first point that we're going to look at. Here's the second point. And here's a good third point. And I'll stop. Okay, let's watch it. 
Rewind. Play. Murray with my left cursor arrow. Murray with my left cursor arrow. Hi, welcome to today's training on setting up your home office. Here's the first point that we're going to look at. Here's the second point. And here's a good third point. Okay, and I'll so stop. we've had her walk on the screen. We pointed to some invisible or imaginary key points. I'm going to start over because I want to do something a little bit different. I would like to have an eye gaze also. Boy, do I have to start over on this whole thing or can I just use this and only re-record or record the things I need to change? So let me rewind this. And also, there's a key button here. By clicking on this arrow on the left, it does move the play head back here, but it doesn't refresh or reset the scene. So let me click on this. Now she's over here. So what I'm going to show you how to do now is I'm going to turn off all the things that could be recorded and turn back on the only item I want to re-record, her eye gaze. So I'm going to go Commander Control Key, excuse me, the Commander Control Key and click and hold it down. And I'm going to click on one of these red record symbols. That turns off the recording for all properties. But I want the recording on just for eye gaze. I'm going to have her eyes move. And I'm going to twiddle this down and notice it says camera input. Well, I'm not going to use my camera. Partly because my glasses interfere with so much. So I can use mouse and touch input instead. So now this will arm this for recording while I'm using my mouse to control her eye gaze. So here we go. I'm going to record. Murray with my left cursor arrow. Murray with my left cursor arrow. Hi, welcome to today's training on setting up your home office. Here's the first point I'm clicking that we're up going to here. look at. And I'm aiming down here's here. the second point. And I'm going to aim down and here. And here's a good and third point. Up. And I'll stop. And I'm going to stop the recording. Notice how this actually went in here and went a little bit beyond. So I'm going to move this back here, this mouse input for eye gaze. Let's rewind. Let's refresh. Let's play. Murray with my left cursor arrow. Murray with my left Hi. cursor arrow. Hi, welcome to today's training on setting up your home office. Here's the first point that we're going to look at. Here's the second point. And here's a good third point. And I'll stop. So there you saw how the eye gaze is controlled by that mouse movement. Again, we controlled or command clicked on the record button. It turned all the properties off. We went back and turned on eye gaze, turned off camera input, and then we turned on mouse input. Now, if you don't wear glasses, you can probably move your eyes around while you're doing this, but I can't with my glasses on. So let's go ahead and export this video via Adobe Media Encoder and it's going to start up Media Encoder but first it's going to ask me what name do you want to use on this and let's call this 1 p.m. Um, walk and point point. and I'm going to click at my home office folder here and this is going to fire up Adobe Media Encoder and then we're just going to tell Media Encoder to take this information and export it out or encode it out as a mp4 file so I can use it in Captivate. I click on the blue here on output file to position or tell it where to save it. That's good. And then I'm going to click encode. So now it'll take a few seconds here to do this. Uh, the actual recording if I look over here is around 18 seconds. Um, it'll probably take twice as long, depending on what kind of computer you have. So I'm going to let it run here a little bit. Again, depending on how fast your computer is and how many programs you have running, it will determine how much time this takes. 
when this is done, we'll quit encoder, we'll quit ca uh, character animator, and we'll bring it into Captivate. So here we go, we're almost done. And boom. I'm going to go up here to Media Encoder. I'm going to turn that off or actually close it down. I'm going to come back into here where I'm in Character Animator. And I'm actually going to click here and quit. It's going to auto save whatever I've done. I'm going to turn off my light source because I'm being blinded. And I'm going to be on this slide and I'm going to bring in my Media, Video, Event, Browse, 1 p.m., open, OK. It's the same size as my slide because we specified that scene size. I'm going to go to timing. I'm going to make sure it's on rest of slide. I'm going to go to properties. It shows me it has a skin or a controller here for a normal quote unquote video in Captivate. I'm going to turn also on auto play. I'm going to turn on auto rewind. So if I come back to the slide. Next thing I'm going to do here is I want to change the stacking order of the objects on the slide. I actually want to take my video object and move it all the way down above just the slide. That way it's going to show everything on my slide. My bulleted points, my titles up here. Everything looks pretty doggone good. Let's cross our fingers and go up to preview and let's pick HTML5 in browser. Okay, I'm going to click play here and let's see what it looks like. There's our first slide from an earlier tutorial. I'm just going to continue past that. Here's the second slide we haven't even done anything with yet. I'm ready with my left cursor arrow. Hi, welcome to today's training on setting up your home office. Here's the first point that we're going to look at. Here's the second point. And here's a good third point. And I'll stop. Okay, so that's pretty rough, but you get the idea that if we know what the background of the slide is, and we can make a, a graphic file of that background, we can have it appear as if the puppet is walking on that background. Now I know I cheated with this white background because it makes it dead easy. If you wanted to put something like on this background here where you want her to walk onto here, I'm going to double click these things and get rid of them. You'd actually have to find out where this background is in your library. And I'm going to look around the neighborhood here. Here's images. Let's see here. Oh, that looks like the right one. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say export. And I'm going to make sure I know what the name is. I'm going to put it in my home office. And then you know what to do. You go back to character animator and I'm going to get my split arrow here and move this up. I'm going to come down here where it says my white background. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to double click up in here and project to import. I'm going to go to my local folder. I'm going to go to my, uh, let's see, my home folder. Let's see, date created, date modified. Here we go. Harmony assets. I'm going to bring this down into the timeline. I'm going to pull it right below everything. I'm going to put it right there. And there it is. I'm going to refresh. And I'm going to pull this down with the split arrow. And I'm going to play it. Let's see what happens. And how do you like that? Walking right on top of the mountaintop. So again, this could be exported out via media encoder. The video brought in, put it the very bottom of the stacking order in Captivate. So your captions for your titles and any captions and any other objects that are on the slide will be above it. So I hope this gives you a little bit of insight on how to do this. It takes a little finesse. It takes a little bit of time. 
but I'd sure wanted to introduce you to it so it's because it is such a great resource. Thank you.